Hello everybody and welcome to this latest episode of The Money Man. Now I have been quiet for quite a few weeks now because there's been very little banknote news. But fortunately, in the last few days there's been an absolute explosion of news relating to new releases in the world of banknotes from all over the globe. So strap yourself in because this is going to be a really good one. I'm going to take you through some of the new releases that we can expect very, very soon. So, the first nation that we're going to go to is the fantastic nation of Bonnie Wee Scotland. That's right, one of the four constituent nations of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I absolutely love Scotland, and I love their banknotes even more because what we have here is the absolutely gorgeous £50 Royal Bank of Scotland Polymer Note, and it looks bloody exquisite. I'm so excited to see this bank note. I cannot wait to get hold of it and put it into my collection. It will complete what I think is going to be one of the best polymer series ever created. That's right. Now, I know that's a big statement, but if we look at the previous denominations, they've been absolutely incredible. So, I'm really excited to get hold of this and complete this series. Now, you might be thinking, is there going to be a £100 note? Well, we do not know. However, we can infer that the answer may be no. And the reason for that is, is because the £50 notes used to be green in Scotland, but now they are red. So it makes us think that possibly the £100 note is going to cease to exist. But we'll have to wait and see. I have done another video of that, which you can find down in the description. But this looks to be the final and highest denomination in the series, thus completing it. And I cannot wait to complete this series. So again, it's continuing with the theme of featuring female role models from Scottish history. Um, so I will go into much more detail about that when I actually have a real banknote to show you uh, a little bit later on. But if we look at the reverse, it looks absolutely wonderful. Again, we've got the theme of nature, continuing that theme of nature that goes throughout this series. My lord, this looks like an incredible banknote. I cannot wait to get hold of this. So as soon as I have examples, I will be doing another video like I said. Okay. The next one is going to be the nation of Honduras. That's right, because Honduras have just announced that they are going to introduce a 200 Lempiris commemorative banknote. And here it is. And what this banknote is doing is it's celebrating the 200th anniversary of independence. That's right. So what you have is you have the theme of education, of educating the next young generation of Hondurans. And you can see that we've got this open book with education written on it, with all these school children who are looking towards the Honduran flag, which is rising out of the center of the book. So you can see the theme is that the education of the young is the future of the Honduran state. So it's very, very nice, very interesting. And if we look over to the right hand side, you can see Viva la Independence, 1821 to 2021. So there we go. It's very fitting that this is a 200 Lempiris note, of course, because it celebrates the 200th anniversary of Honduran independence. So let's have a look at the reverse. Really beautiful banknote. I like this a lot. We've got these two wonderful parrots in flight, and you've got these wonderful uh, rolling jungle scenes behind, and these snaking rivers moving through the Honduran countryside. Absolutely gorgeous. And then you can see the seal of the central bank of Honduras just to the right. So really, really cool. Can't wait to get hold of this. Nice banknote. Here we go. Here's the next one. Zimbabwe, that's right, we are going to Zimbabwe now, and you're probably not surprised to know that Zimbabwe is going to issue yet another banknote. It's going to be a higher denomination, continuing the series that they rolled out last year of this deflated uh, Zimbabwean dollar, and you can see that, of course, now they're having to introduce a 50 Zimbabwean dollar, and don't think that this will be the last denomination. It is highly likely that there will be more after, because in Inflation continues to be a persistent problem 
in that African nation. But what you can see on the front is we've got those same three rocks that represent the stability of the Zimbabwean economy. And they also make up the logo of the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe as well. So that's why you always see those rocks on Zimbabwean banknotes. And if we flip it around and look at the reverse, we seem to have some kind of military figures. And the, the, the largest image, I'm not too sure who that is. I don't know if it's supposed to be sort of like a you know, a generic person or if it's actually, you know, a key figure in Zimbabwean history. Um, but it looks like we've got three military men and it looks like that is some kind of monument. I'm not sure. Um, so there are two things that this could be. This could be a representation of the military forces that were instrumental in the removal of the previous dictator of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe. Or it could be something to do with the armed resistance against the Rhodesian government um, back in the day. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just sort of taking guesses here. Um, but you can see it's very much in keeping with the design of the previous notes in the, in the series. And why this is needed now? Well, like I said, inflation. A little bit of anecdotal evidence that I heard recently is that it costs 150 Zimbabwean dollars for a single beer. That's right, one beer in the supermarket. So you can probably start to see why this is needed. But there we go. I don't think this is the end of the story. Expect more to come in this series. Okay, so the next one is going to be the Cook Islands. That's right. So, the Cook Islands. Now, interesting fact about the Cook Islands, they do have their own currency, of course, you can see it right here. However, their currency is actually pegged to the New Zealand dollar, and actually the New Zealand dollar is widely circulated within the Cook Islands. However, the Cook Islands Ministry of Finance and Economic Management still do produce Cook Island dollar notes. And here you can see their latest example, the unusual denomination of three Cook Island dollars. Now, they have produced three dollar notes before, and I believe that they are legal tender. Now, I absolutely love this banknote. I just love the, the, the culture in it, and the design is fantastic. Now, YouTube... The nudity is not my fault. It's art. It's art, of course. But you can see we've got this bare-chested woman riding a great white shark, as you do. And she seems to be clutching something in her hands which looks like a coconut, but I'm not entirely sure. Now, this is obviously not just your average woman. I would assume that this is some kind of deity. Um, because, of course... People don't ride great white sharks, and um, the shark doesn't look too happy about this either, if you look at his face. But I absolutely love the sort of theme of the ocean and Cook Island uh, native culture in this banknote. It's really, really, really cool. Uh, if you look at the Cook Island dollars, uh, there are other banknotes. They're just so cool. They're really, really nice banknotes. Flip it on the back. And you can see that we've got this little statue, again, representing the uh, creativity and artwork of the uh, indigenous culture. And then we've got a reflection of the sort of maritime heritage of the Cook Islands peoples. Um, of course, any sort of these uh, Polynesian islands, you know, um, fishing and boating are a big part of their existence. And usually it's something that is represented on sort of Polynesian um, banknotes. And this is no different, of course. So really, really nice banknote. Cannot wait to get hold of this. Very, very cool polymer banknote. Okay, the next country we're going to is Mongolia. That's right. Here we go. Okay, so the Bank of Mongolia have announced that they are going to introduce a 10,000 Togrog commemorative banknote, and here it is. Now, I do like the style of Mongolian banknotes. They remind me very much of the Japanese yen, because the color palette is very, very similar. If you compare them to, you know, polymer banknotes, things like the New Zealand dollar, the Australian dollar, you know, they, they look kind of drab and boring. However, I don't take that opinion. I think these banknotes have their place because they, they create contrast in the world of banknotes. And I really hope that every country doesn't follow the same route and make everything vibrant and, you know, really colorful like New Zealand or Canada or Australia. I like that we've still got some very, very traditional designs still around. And Mongolia is one of those places that holds out. Um, they, they stick to their roots in terms of the design of banknotes. Now, 
this one is really, really cool. You can see it's got a 100 on the right-hand side, so it's celebrating the 100th anniversary of something I'm not sure what. I tried relentlessly to try and get the press release on their, on the Bank of Mongolia's website to open up in English, but it just wouldn't do it. It kept taking me back to the main page of their website, which is extremely frustrating, and I can't read Mongolian. But we've got the uh, years of 1921 to 2021, so we're celebrating the centenary of something. I do not know. If you know, slap it down in the comments. Everyone will appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, let's have a look at the reverse. Again, what I love about these banknotes, and again, like Japanese yen banknotes, is that, you know, the, the vignettes or the pictures or whatever, they look hand-drawn. They're really, really cool, and I like that style. You know, they don't look photographic. Um, so I hope they keep that style. And Mongolian banknotes do have a very sort of unique flavor about them. They sort of look like documents in a way. Um, they're very, very interesting. So you can see, um, I'm not quite sure what is going on the, on the reverse. Uh, I don't know if that's some kind of town square or temple or something like that, um, but it's pretty, pretty cool. So there we go. Okay, the final country is the South American country of Peru. And do keep an eye on that animal in the top left of the coat of arms of Peru, because you might see that one again. Okay, so Peru have opted to introduce a new series of their national currency, which is the Sol. And here we have the 10 Sol note. And I love the crisp green color of this banknote. And I really like the patterns that move through it. And you've got a very interesting security strip over to the left. And then you've actually got a section of the pattern over to the right, which is also made up of a reflective um, material as well, which is very, very nice. Another additional security feature. I like that. I've not, I don't think I've seen that in an, on another banknote, so that's cool. Um, so really, really nice banknote, very crisp color scheme. I like it. It looks cool. Let's flip it over and look at the back. Now, the bank, you can see, is actually vertical. Um, this is a trend that is growing in popularity. If you remember, the, uh, the current series of Hong Kong dollars do this. Um, the reverse of all those notes are vertical. So this seems to be a growing trend in banknote design. And you can see that we've actually got uh, what I think may be the national animal of Peru. I'm guessing because I think it's the same animal that's on the coat of arms. And it's called a vincuna. Um, I've probably mispronounced that. It kind of looks like a small llama, but not quite the same. Um, it's one of the animals that is ubiquitous to the region of the Andes. And um, you can find them in abundance, apparently. Um, so you can see that animal represented on the reverse. And just below its neck, you can see the coat of arms of Peru, which what looks to be that same animal in the coat of arms. So it's obviously an animal that represents the um, sort of a biodiversity of Peru. And you can see we've also got some flowers as well indigenous to the region. Okay, let's have a look at the next denomination in this growing series. It is the 100 Sol note, and again, nice, crisp colors. We've got a nice, refreshing blue color here, and I love the patterns that move through the banknote, but very much the same as the 10 Sol in many, many ways. And i got to say that this chap on the front, what an epic mustache he's got. That is a fantastic mustache. Um, so there we go. So hopefully I'll be able to get hold of these when the series is complete, and then I will feature them in a video much, much later on. Interestingly about these banknotes, instead of actually putting the national flag of Peru on the banknote, they've just put the word Peru rising up through the middle, which is kind of unusual. Um, but I kind of like it. So there we go. Let's have a look at the reverse. So the reverse, again, you can see the celebration of the flora and fauna of Peru. And we've got some kind of hummingbird here. And the nectar drinking bird. Um, very, very nice indeed, and another flower, which I believe is the flower that the hummingbird drinks from. Uh, so there we go. Um, I think it's a hummingbird. I'm guessing so. Um, but you can see it's got a, an indigenous name down at the bottom. So really, really nice banknotes. I think the reverse of these banknotes is a little bit drab. There's a lot of empty space, so to speak. Um, so I think a lot of the, uh, you know, you know the, the effort has gone into actually the front of the banknotes. But maybe I'm being a little bit unkind there. 
So that's everything I've got for you today. Lots and lots of banknote releases. There are a couple that I've not included in this video, which I'm saving for another project that I'm working on a little bit later, or I might just change my mind and do single entry videos on those. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but let me know what you think about these down in the comment section. Are you going to try and get hold of these? And are you still collecting? Times have been tough, but... There may be light on the horizon. There may be light at the end of the tunnel. Possibly things are getting better. I don't know. Fingers crossed. I hope so. I hope you're all safe and well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's The Money Man, signing out for now. Bye-bye.